So I guaranteed that I successfully saved my extended reaction, my extended intro to this. Uh, obviously, this has been a while coming. I didn't react to the trailer for the... Uh, I didn't react to the like the logo reveal for The Hunger Games about the Songbirds and Snakes, which was uh, months ago. She's practically a year ago. And... Yeah, I'm reacting to the actual trailer now, which is almost three minutes. This is going to be... I'm, I'm really hoping this is worth every single second. I... <laughs> that that intro I was doing before, it went about five and a half minutes, and I'm like, I'm not Renegades React. I'm not the Renegade Media Group. I'm, I can't make intros this long. So, <laughs> it's been almost a minute, this intro right here. So, let's not waste any more time. Official trailer for The Hunger Games, Battle of Songbirds and Snakes. Here we go. Actually, let's make this the bigger screen. I am honored to introduce to you the creator of the Hunger Games themselves, Dean Casca Highbottom. I have summoned you all here for the 10th annual reaping ceremony, in which we choose two children from each district to fight to the death in the Hunger Games. From District 12. Lucy Gray Baird. Hmm. That's the better from somewhere. Been a change this year. As a mentor, Mr. Snow, your role is to turn these children into spectacles, not survivors. What does my mentor do besides bring me roses? I do my best to take care of you. You really want to take care of me in that arena? Start by thinking I can actually win. I'm Lucky Flickerman. First ever host of the Hunger Games. Enjoy the show. Five. Four. Enjoy the show. Three. Two. Enjoy the show. Run. Enjoy the show. What happens in there? Fueled with the terror of becoming prey. See how quickly we become predator? See how quickly civilization disappears? goodness built into us all. We can step across that line into evil. Or not. Wow, I'm I'm impressed that I don't remember reading much about like the uh, as I said in my extended intro, which will probably be posted after this or before it, one of the two. I don't remember the reading about High Bottom, like when I was reading about what happens in the book. But I mean, it uh. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if that means they're going to, like, expand his role and make him, like, more evil. And, like, therefore, Volumnia Gall, Dr. Gall, played by Viola Davis, will not be as evil as in the book. I mean, I would think that, like, again, this is... They're going to want to, like, keep things as close to the book as possible. And that, sheesh, I heard that this, like nearly like about three hours 45 minutes was the cut they had I don't know how much they cut it down since then that was the like 
month or so ago, I heard that was the current cut, which they didn't... I don't think they put out a, t a new poster. I think we still just have the poster with the... Uh, I think we just still have the... Yeah. I'm pretty sure this is the only poster right now. The one with just the... The songbird and the snake, obviously. Which, like, it's great to finally see, like... It, it fully realized in the... Uh, in the film. In the... In visual. And, like... I mean, based on what they do show us of Gaul... They make her rightfully creepy. Based on what I've read about her. And I just like, it's going to be a new kind of role to see Viola Davis and that's for sure. And I'm like, I'm absolutely looking forward to it. I mean, Rachel Zagler, she's she's killing it right now. I mean, at least in terms of like how much her fans love and appreciate her. I mean, I know what's a shame is West Side Story 2021 didn't perform well. Shazam, Fury of the Gods didn't perform well. This, I think success is more guaranteed based on what I'm seeing here. And I'm excited for <laughs> what I'm seeing. And, wow. I just... This this is really going to go deep into, like... And, I mean, it's strange how they talk about, like, everybody is good, and yet you see somebody like Volumnia Gall, who, like, she doesn't have any good. She's a sadist who enjoys... Who's enjoying the fact that, like, she gets to create monsters to kill people in a spectacle. Look upon my work, ye mighty in despair. Look on my work, ye mighty in despair. What I, I might have paraphrased the quote. Walt Whitman. I may not even be saying Walt Whitman. Uh, it may not even be Walt Whitman's poem, so there you go. It's just the problem is any poem related to Breaking Bad, I can't help but relate to Walt Whitman. <laughs> Even when that's not necessarily true. Let's let's do a quick Google search on High Bottom to see what kind of details are brought into Casca High Bottom. Daily Academy, the unintentional creator of the Hunger Games. When the creation of the games is officially announced, High Bottom surges the public face of the event, beginning a year long downward spiral that would end with his assassination by future president Gloria Lannis now. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, clearly Gaul was the one manufacturing all of the, the mods and all the, like, different traps and such and such that target the tributes in the game, and it all, games, and it all started with the 10th annual games. I I don't know if I ever said this on camera before, but it, if they ever did a reboot if for years from now for the Hunger Games, I feel like they should change it so that like it's not the seventy fourth Hunger Games that Katniss ends up in; it's the seventy third. So that way we can see a year of her and Peta being tribute, being mentors to like two new District Twelve tributes, and I feel like there's there's so much you could get from that, and it's just it's a missed opportunity. It's Maybe the one missed opportunity that Catching Fire has. That, like, I really wish you would have had something more. Uh, really could have delved more into that. And then instead of, like, the next year's the quarter quell. And, like, they're thrown back into the arena. Uh, and here we go again. But it's not a here we go again. I mean, Catching Fire accelerates and is able to elevate itself beyond that. And that's what was so... One of the things that work so great about it you have yeah I'm doing a little like I don't know what uh yeah I don't want to read too much into it because I want to like see the movie and then read the book to find out I don't know how much of like what's fasc also fascinating is like how much is like is being presented with uh, how much is being presented when it comes to what the is there like elements of like what ends up happening like is there like other supplementary material that Susan Collins has put out that involves what in the heck the 
uh, also goes on in the time in the 64 years between uh, the 10th games and the 74th games. I mean, I already have that big theory in my head as to like how I think the movie's going to end, which I already hear that Donald Sutherland's making a uh, cameo at the end, which I'm guessing it's a time skip directly into the events of the the first movie. So we'll see for ourselves soon enough. Uh, I'm glad that like most of the talking in this video went into after the trailer re reaction as opposed to during or before it. <laughs> well, there you have it. Uh, I will definitely do a trailer reaction to the next one. Uh, I, I definitely look forward to it. I look to the mo forward to seeing the movie itself. This year's the 10th anniversary of Catching Fire. Last year was the 10th for the first Hunger Games. And it's crazy to think it's been that long. They're like, time flies. Really. Uh, see you guys next time. Thanks a lot for watching.